Okay, today I want to talk to you about something that really I've got no business talking to you about, and that is ways to improve your kick at the end of a race. You know, you've been running the whole race, and then all of a sudden you find that little bit of extra energy to just give it everything as you cross the line. I've got no business talking about this because I never have enough energy to do it. But after we talk about this, I'm going to take some of the tips that I'm going to give you and perhaps utilize them in a future race. So hopefully I will be able to find a kick out of somewhere. There's a specific recipe to follow, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, before we get started, I did find an article on Cifuentes coaching and consulting website. So it's a coaching website. Nicole Cifuentes is the coach, and obviously, you know, she's a coach. She knows what she's talking about. I will place a link to this article in the show notes below if you want to go and check out the article or check her out. So the article is titled Seven Tips to Develop Your Kick. And, you know, look, okay, I don't know how many races you've done. I have done quite a lot. And there are some times where I am passing people at the end of the race, and there are other times when I am being passed at the end of a race. I prefer the former to the latter. In fact, even at my last marathon, the Toronto Marathon, after watching the video, I realized that a couple of people did pass me like right at the end of the race. And I was giving it everything I had at that point. So I didn't feel bad at the time because I felt like I was giving it everything, like there was nothing more to give. So if somebody passed me and I'm doing my best, I don't really feel bad. But maybe that wasn't absolutely necessary. Maybe if I followed these tips that we're going to get into, I could have had a kick at the end. Maybe lowered my time just a little bit and maybe made it so I wasn't passed at the end. Of course, maybe you're like me in that it doesn't really matter if you have a finishing kick at the end. You know what I mean? Like we're probably not finishing in a podium spot. So if somebody passes you at the end, you know, ultimately it's not going to make too big of a difference to your result. But perhaps you're running in a smaller race. And if you are running in a smaller race, perhaps you are a contender for a podium spot. Maybe that's an age group podium spot. And to get out kicked at the end of a race like that when it's the difference between first or second place in your age group that's when it could really make a big deal so let's get into it and look just going back to what I said at the beginning I got no business talking about that and you'll see why in just a second because the first tip that Nicole gives us is don't start too fast and starting too fast you know it's a rookie mistake but it's also an experienced runner's mistake like me I run a few races. I still start too fast a lot of the time. Now, in Toronto, I don't feel like I started too fast. I felt like I started at a pretty good pace, right on target of where I wanted to be. But I did run a 5K probably a week before that you're watching this video, and I started way too fast. Like, given the goal I had in my mind, I was running so much faster than that goal. And I wasn't really paying attention to my watch. I just went out and I just legged it and I was taking off to the runners that were taking off in front of me without paying attention at all to what I was doing. Of course, I soon realized that that was gonna come back and bite me because the next couple of miles in that 5K, I really slowed down quite a bit and I probably would not have done that. Well, I mean, it's, it's obvious. I wouldn't have done that had I have started off just a little slower. And in all likelihood, you know, I would have finished faster had I started slower. You know, all the long distance races, all the world records in the long distance races are made by running an even split or a negative split. It's that same thinking when you're running hills. You don't want to hammer it going up a hill because you'll never make up that pace that you slow down on the downhill. And the same thing goes when you are pacing a race. Yes, you may think you're banking some time at the beginning, but that just, that just isn't true. If you start off a little slower, you'll be able to finish quicker because you're saving that energy. You're not burning yourself out at the beginning of the race. You're saving it for the end of the race when it really matters and when that kick may be the difference between a top podium spot or just falling out of contention. And look, I'm talking about podium spots. It's not just about podium spots. You could be 20th in your age group and then without that finishing kick, you could be 25th in your age group. The point is, is that a finishing kick has the potential to place you higher in the rankings and therefore leaving you feeling better about your race. Okay, so the first tip, don't start too fast. Proper pacing is just key. It is the number one element to that finishing kick. It's, it's actually the number one element of like proper racing. Don't start too fast and your whole race will be better. The second tip is to make it a habit. And how do you make things a habit? You do them time and time again. And you might not be racing time and time again, or you might not be racing enough to practice this finishing kick, but I'll tell you what you are doing. You're training. You're probably going out most every day, several times a week at least. And so you can practice this finishing fast on those easy runs that you're going out and you're just training. Now look, I'm not talking about a max effort at the end of every run, but I actually find this in my own running just because it takes me so long to warm up that my beginning miles are often slower than my ending miles. But just try and finish your runs running a little faster than you do at the beginning of your runs. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it's important to practice. Okay, the third tip for developing that finishing kick is to practice pace changing. 
Now, this is what you're going to incorporate when, let's say, you're running intervals or maybe even running a tempo run or a threshold run. Your pace changes can be incorporated into these things by, well, exactly as the name says, changing your pace. So Nicole suggests giving her athletes a three minute interval and then changing the paces every minute. So the first minute is fast, the middle minute is faster, and the third minute is faster still. And what that's doing is teaching your body how to change gears. So when you think you're running fast, it teaches you that, yes, I can still run faster. I have another gear. So practice that in your training runs and it should be easier to implement on race day when it's needed. Okay, the fourth tip to develop that finishing kick is to cue yourself. Give yourselves the cues necessary so you know what to do. And this article suggests two things. The first one is to pump your arms faster. The second is to take quicker steps. So when you are getting to the end of the race and you're tired, look, we're all gonna be at that max effort, especially when we're running a 5K. I mean, in my last 5K, I think I got like a new max heart rate. It was a hard effort. It's easy to think like pump your arms faster or turn those legs over just a little quicker. And just the thought is going to cue you and make you do it. Now, it might not feel like you're doing it because your legs are so heavy and you're so tired at the end of the race, it's never going to hurt to cue yourself and kind of remind yourself of form and you never know those pumping those arms a little quicker or turning those legs over just a little faster could be the difference between a fast finish or not between getting the time that you wanted and not getting the time that you wanted you know you've heard it a hundred times before running is a mental game and sometimes we have to trigger that mental response you have to tell yourself what to do so you do it if we just relied on what felt good we wouldn't do anything and at the end of the race let's be honest probably not gonna be feeling your best. So a little reminder, a little cue to pump your arms a little faster or to keep those legs turning over, it's gonna make a big difference. I want you to try it, or if you have tried it, let me know how it worked out for you and of course, drop a comment so I know. And of course, now would be a good time to encourage you to drop a comment if you have ever incorporated a finishing kick into any of your runs, into your workouts, or if you haven't. I'd love to hear about it either way. Moving on, the fifth way to develop that finishing kick is to end with a flourish. That's what Nicole calls it, ending your run with a flourish. And basically, occasionally and this isn't at the end of every single run but occasionally you want to end your run with a tag interval tag interval is where you kind of run all out for a short distance and a short distance is up to you Nicole suggests anywhere from 200 meters up to a mile and basically it's just hammering it at the end of a run just to remind yourself and remind your legs that they can run fast because I'm telling you after you go out for an easy run it is very difficult to start picking up the pace after you've been running easy for a long time it's almost like you get stuck slow and that just kind of resets everything and that's where the flourish comes from. You are ending your run on a flourish. You will feel better at the end of that run if you pick up the pace just a little bit towards the end. Now, of course, running all out. I don't know. Not sure I really like the idea of running all out at the end of an easy run, but I can definitely see how it would make a difference and it will make you feel better about your run overall. Okay, the sixth way that you are gonna develop your finishing kick is to make that decision ahead of time. Look, you have already trained a lot. You're not just rolling the dice and going into a race and just, I wonder what's gonna happen. No, you've been training for this. And the same way that you approach your training with intention and with specificity, that's how you want to approach your race and especially that finishing kick on the end. So you don't just chance it. You don't just say, oh, I'm going to have a finishing kick if I can. No, you make the decision ahead of time. That way you are already prepared. You already know what's coming. So when that time comes, you know that it's time to just put the hammer down, put your foot down and run fast to the finish. It may be even best to decide an actual place that you're going to pick up the pace. Now, if you know the course, this could be a place on the course, or you could be watching the distance on your GPS watch. And with a 5k, you could decide at, I don't know, four and a half k to just pick up the pace and that last half a kilometer or 500 meters, that is when you are going to go all out, run as hard as you can. You are not gonna spare the horses. You are gonna be pumping your arms, turning your legs, and it will make a difference to your race finish. And hopefully no one will pass you. But if they do, that's okay also. You still gave it your best effort. And the last way to develop that finishing kick, all right, we talked about making a conscious effort to pick up the pace and actually do it when it's time to do it. But before that, we have to visualize. And visualization is a big thing in your success of running. You have to know that you are going to do it. And to know you're gonna do it, you have to practice doing it. But you can't practice doing it before you've done it, so we visualize. And you visualize the feeling of running hard after you've already been running for a long time. You visualize that feeling of picking up the pace and turning your legs over and pumping your arms. You visualize finishing your race in the position that you want. You visualize someone coming up behind you and then all of a sudden you give it your finishing kick and they aren't able to pass you at that last minute. You gotta think about all these things. And by visualizing it, it's going to better enable you to do it when the time comes. Okay, your turn. I wanna know what the last race you did was or 
I don't know, let's open this up to everyone that hasn't even raced. I want to know what was the last activity that you did that was hard, so you had to put in more of an effort. So we're not talking about easy runs, so maybe intervals, tempo. Even if you do another activity, there are probably times you get tired doing it and you have to push towards the end. Pina, I'm looking at you, jumping rope. I want to know how you have finished strong or not finished strong. So go ahead and drop that in the comments. And um, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days. Thank you.